Hey guys, Clyde here, and in today, oh, hang on, I forgot to put something on the screen. There we go. Hey guys, Clyde here, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about a bunch of ships that are not out yet, but are coming out soon, and I cannot wait to walk through these with you. Now, this is sort of like what we do when we read the dev blog, except for I could show you the ships in port in this video. I can't tell you about my impressions of the ships if I've played them, but the good news for you is I've played almost none of these ships. In fact, I've only played one of them, and uh, I think I can separate uh, what's written on the page from my impressions for that ship. Yeah, maybe you can guess which one it is. Anyway, uh, we are gonna talk about these boats here today, so let's get right into it. We'll start with Delarna. Uh, Delarna is the super destroyer that's gonna be at the top of the Holland line in the Pan Euro destroyer uh, tree. Now, obviously, uh, the Delarna here is a work in progress. The Holland is not. So Delarna, one, two, three turrets across the top there. Here's Holland. Holland just has one turret up front. The second one here is an AA gun, uh, I believe. And then, of course, a single turret at back. So we get six guns with Delarna. Let's take a look a little bit at the artillery for Delarna. Six guns, 120 millimeters. If we hover over here, we can see that the reload time is 2.8 seconds. On an initial release of this ship, that reload was two seconds. And during testing, they've reduced that figure. Of course, that means uh, that the ship was proving to be very powerful in the hands of our testers. And so they've brought that number uh, down a bit in terms of DPM. 180 degree turn time, 7.2 seconds. That's actually fairly quick. You won't be disappointed at how quickly these guns turn. Uh, maximum dispersion uh, is 99 meters there listed in the client with a range of 11.2 base. Now I have an untrained captain on here. And if we take a look at the equipment, by the way, no modules are installed, no signals are mounted. This is absolute base. So we'll be able to uh, enhance those figures from here. Um, again, taking a look at the artillery, we'll come back out to get a nice, beautiful picture of the ship. Uh, maximum damage, 1,750 for the HE shells, the high explosive shells, 2,100 for the uh, for the armor piercing shells. 825 meters per second is the initial shell velocity. There are some figures and particulars about shell drag and things that are gonna affect that, but um, 825 is reasonable. It's not as fast as like the Soviet ships, which might be as high as 950. Uh, I think, meters per second. You might have a 975 in there. Um, so 825 is not the slowest. I think the slowest is probably around 808. It seems like that's a number that sticks out in my mind. Um, the fire chance is reasonable, better than some ships, not as good as others. Uh, but we're looking at relatively fast uh, shooting there, 2.8 seconds. That is going to still be quick with six barrels. If we take a look at Holland for a comparison, um, now mine does have a commander on it. Let me remove uh, the old, old Captain Woyna here. Don't dismiss him, Clyde. Send him to reserve. Okay. We are still going to have uh, in my equipment, I'm not going to demount all my modules for this, uh, but we can see that my reload time is two seconds here uh, with two thirds as many guns. When we take a look at torpedoes, uh, this is the torpedo armament here for the Delarna. It's got two types of torpedoes. One goes 15 kilometers, one goes eight kilometers. That's part of this super ship's super trick. The 15 kilometer uh, torpedoes only do 10,700 damage. The eight kilometer torpedoes do 17,500. Speed's a little bit better on the 15K uh, torps, 86 knots to 70 with the eight kilometer ones. 70 knots at eight kilometers, that's a pretty fast torpedo. That can get some work done, that's fine. But 86 is gonna be much uh, much better there. The detectability of the eights is much lower, but frankly, they're going to know you launched them because they'll probably spot you. They might not. Uh, I believe the concealment of this ship is going to be reasonable enough that you'll be able to hide 7.5 before we add a module, before we uh, uh, an upgrade module, before we customize our captain. Uh, so we, we should be able to bring that down about 20% or so. And we, we, might, uh, we might see that number. I, let me just do the math real quick. 7.5 times 0.8, about six kilometers, right, is what we're going to get. Um, and so there's, that's the torpedo trick, right? Like I say, hover over this. We, we've got a slash in here. This is kind of something you don't see on very many ships. 15 slash 8, 86 slash 70. If we look at AA defense, we'll go back to Delarna. Uh, AA defense is a, a rating of 92 there for this ship and 85 for Holland. Again, 85 with a captain, with modules and things. So we might be able to modify that a little bit and improve it on Delarna. 
Overall range is six kilometers. I do want to take a look at the damage by shell explosions is 1890, which is fairly high. We've got some ships at, at tier nine, 10 that are going to be as low as, you know, 12 to 1400. So this is pretty good. Uh, we do get nine shell explosions in a salvo. This should be pretty good at knocking down aircraft. But again, until we really had a chance to try it, um, it will be hard to tell. If we compare that with Holland and we look at their, oops, not armor, silly me not concealment. Uh, damage by explosions, 1890 again, um, and six puffs in a salvo. So it's gonna have, it's gonna be able to affect more of the sky than Holland just based on those numbers alone. 36 knots, not a particularly speedy boy. 4.4 uh, second rudder shift time with a 720 meter turning radius. And we take a look at Holland just as a comparison, 36.8, again with captains and modules and things that may be adjusting that, 4.3 second rudder shift time, tighter turning radius. So Delerna is not likely to be able to make as tight of turns and things as we're expected, uh, expecting when we play something like Holland. So that may be a factor for some, for some captains. Concealment, uh, 7.5, as we said earlier, again, getting that down to about six kilometers. Um, and comparing that to Holland, six kilometers. So I think you're gonna see particular, uh, basically similar numbers there. We've got uh, a turbo AA module here, defensive AA. Uh, we've also got a hull repair that's gonna heal 203 hit points per second for 14 seconds. A speed boost module, standard 8% speed boost, two minute runtime, two minute cooldown, and a damage control party. Uh, so fairly typical loadout for uh, for a pan Euro destroyer here. Uh, and I, I think Delarna is going to be no different there. One thing I forgot to talk about with Delarna was her hit points. She's got 20,300 base. Um, if we added a commander perk here for uh, survivability expert, she'd get 350 ex uh, hit points per tier. I don't know if that actually counts as 11 for a, for a, a super ship. Wargaming is very careful to not call these tier 11. They call them super ships, but I think it probably does. Um, so yeah, you'd wind up with 2,300, 2,400 hit points on board here. Uh, my Holland right now has a little over 22,000 hit points. Okay. Jumping over to talk about the next ship, Alvaro de Bassan. Uh, Alvaro sits here with about 26,600 hit points. Again, no commander, no modules installed. Let's double check that. Yep, no modules or anything of the kind. So 26,000 hit points. You could probably get her up around 30K with captain and everything else set up on board there. For artillery, she comes with eight guns. That's four 135 millimeter dual barrel turrets. So that's a total of eight guns with a base range of 12.6 kilometers. If we take a look at those guns for detail, they start off with a 6.6 .6 second reload and an 18 second rotation time of 180 degrees. Now, Khabarovsk, as I have it built, not the same ship. Kaba is not probably quite the same and you'll see some differences as we go through for one the gun caliber is different uh, but the rotation of the guns is 180 degrees so like or, i'm sorry nine seconds for 180 degrees Woo, come on clyde keep it together um and so that nine second rotation is twice as fast as what you're seeing on Bassan. so you know that's a that's a uh, kind of a detriment to those guns we don't think of kaba's guns as rotating really fast but they're certainly not as, as slow as some of the lower tier soviet destroyers Firing range, like I said, about 12.6 kilometers. Um, the burst fire, this ship has a burst fire mode where it can do three bursts in a series. The interval between shots is 1.2 seconds and it can do that every 30 seconds. Again, this is before enhancing your ship for reload, before putting a commander. So we'll be able to improve these numbers just like we can improve the reload time of the guns when you're not in burst fire. Uh, what this would allow you to do uh, is basically put out three salvos uh, 1.2 seconds apart, which is pretty freaking great. Um, now, note that is 30 seconds here. What that implies, of course, is that you do three salvos in 30 seconds. Well, three salvos would actually be 6.6 .6 times two seconds apart because you'd fire, reload for 6.6 .6 seconds, fire, reload for 6.6 .6 seconds, and fire again. So that's 12 uh, or 13.2 seconds total and putting out three salvos worth of guns. So I think a lot of players put this thing in burst mode or put ships like this in burst mode. They put Conde in burst mode and they just ride it there the whole game. I know on my Conde, I have done that before, uh, but there is some value in recognizing that your DPM is higher when you're not in burst fire mode. Burst fire mode's great when you're gonna have a very good window of opportunity to use it, but it's not necessarily the thing you should be doing all the time because that reload is actually penalizing your overall DPM. Something to think about with these burst fire mechanic ships. 
Uh, the maximum damage of the HE shells is 1950 uh, with a 9% fire chance, which is decent, right? It's a little bit better than the Delarna we just looked at and pretty on the high end of things. With uh, a Captain Perk, you could push that up to 10%. Armor pen is 23 millimeters due to the 135 mil caliber, 825 meter per second uh, initial velocity, which isn't the fastest. You know, we talked about uh, uh, the comparison against Khabarovsk earlier for the, the turret rotation. If we take a look at Khabarovsk's um, initial velocity for the shells at 900, right? So it's significantly faster than what we see on Alvaro. If we take a look at the torpedo armament of this ship, it's 13.5 kilometer torpedoes, but man, are they slow, 56 knots. We'll have to see, of course, how that pans out and how players wind up using the ship once it's released, uh, but those are not gonna be speedy at all. We saw 86 knot torps on the Delarna. Now, Delarna is a super ship and all that stuff, but 30 knots is not the difference between a tier 10 and a super ship. That's the difference between slow torpedoes and fast torpedoes. So, you know, not quite sure exactly how these are gonna feel for players who take this ship out there and put it to work, but you're certainly not going to be sniping people at max range with torpedoes that slow would be my prediction uh, taking a look at depth charges again this is such a an interesting number that we're just really not used to comparing um, as we go today we know destroyers are are not very fun to fight submarines in but you do drop 10 uh, depth charges in a charge you got two charges in other words two times you can hit the i think it's the g key to deploy your uh, your depth charges. 40 second reload time for the depth charge uh, charges. Depth charge charges is kind of a wacky thing to say. AA defense of 60, so not the AA powerhouse that we saw in Delarna, but you know, not without AA defense as well. 307 uh, hit points, uh, or excuse me, hit points of continuous damage there. I wanted to take a look at the priority sector, or not the, let's see here. Priority sector reinforcement. Does this not get flak puffs? Uh, I'm sorry. Let me try Delarna here. This has damage by shell explosions, which exists. I guess these shells are 30 and 37 millimeter guns. Whereas with Delarna, we have a one, we have 120s and 57s and 40s. So the caliber here is a heck of a lot smaller. Are the main battery not dual purpose? Oh my goodness. Yeah, boy, that is that is a reduced AA capability that we're learning about right now. Huh, I'll be darned. Well, let's move on to maneuverability. In other words, don't uh, don't try to solo planes, work with your friends. <laughs> uh, maneuverability, 40 knots for the top speed uh, with a turning circle of 730, rudder shift time of 5.6 seconds. I know Kaba, again, I keep going to it because it seems like this should be a Kaba analog, uh, but we are finding some differences there. And I think speed is one of them. 40 knots is 5.2 knots slower than my Kaba as built. Now you might be able to increase that speed of the ship putting some uh, signals on there that increase your speed 5%, things like that. So I don't think 40 is where most players are gonna see that ship performing. 760 meters, 8.9 seconds. Um, slightly better turning circle and definitely a better turning circle radius than my Kaba. So you'll be able to at least crank the wheel and get wrapped around a corner a little bit faster. Uh, when we get down to concealment, 7.7 .7 kilometers before we are able to reduce that concealment using um, upgrade modules as well as captain uh, captain perks. So we will see that come down to well below 7.7, .7, probably get down into the mid low sixes there. When it comes to equipment for Alvaro de Basson, you're looking at a pretty basic set of consumables. We've got an 8% speed boost, 120 second action time, 120 second reload time with a smoke generator and DCP, that's it. So no hull repair, no air, uh, defensive AA or turbo AA boost, uh, nothing really fancy here. What you get is that burst fire mode and a pretty standard destroyer other than that. I did want to cover Malta, the aircraft carrier, tier 10 British aircraft carrier that is coming into the game um, because she's new. And I think there's some people who are going to be looking forward to this ship. She looks really cool. I love the big M on the deck for Malta. I love this big square tower they've got on the, the right hand side of the ship as she sails forth. Um, I think that looks pretty great. Uh, obviously the camouflage here is a little, um, shall we say basic, but at least she's not rusty. She looks pretty good. Taking a quick look at uh, this ship, survivability, we're looking at 66,600 hit points. Of course, your intent is to never use those as an aircraft carrier captain, but should you get shot at, uh, that's the number of points that you have before you go down. Again, we have an untrained commander on here. We have no equipment installed. So these are base numbers from which you'll be able to build this ship out. When we look at the 
aircraft. It's got uh, these attack aircraft, three attack flights, it says. So 2,190 hit points for the for the ship there. 137 knots is not very fast. Um, it's reasonable, but it's not... Well, actually, no, that's pretty slow. Let's get some CVs in here. Do I have any... I think the only tier 10 CV I have is Immelman, because I am not a CV main. So we will compare. Immelman does have particularly fast airplanes. So these are 137 knots. If we go take a look at, let me collapse those, at Immelman, uh, 154 knots for the torpedo bombers, 174 knots for the skip bombers. So if we go back to Malta, you know, 137 here, 136, and 134. Very slow compared to Immelman's airplanes. Uh, 2,190 health, 2,250, and 2,320. Again, before doing much buildup. I don't have my captain on Immelman, but I do have upgrade modules, things of that nature. So 1,800 hit points here, and 1,976 hit points there. So obviously Malta's planes are a little bit tankier than what we're seeing with Maxwell Immelman. Nothing surprising in here for equipment on the Malta. We are looking at a uh, pretty standard equipment. Damage control party, which is automatically um, automatically actuated when it needs to be, and a fighter, which is automatically launched when it needs to be. So nothing too special in here. Next up, we have Velos. Velos is a tier nine Fletcher class destroyer that is uh, from the, uh, the Greek nation. That means it'll land in our Pan-Euro nation here in World of Warships. Uh, Velos, I I've heard, means arrow in uh, in Greek, and so I guess that's like an arrow, like a bow and arrow, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we are looking at a singular torpedo launcher. In fact, let's just double check that. Yep, one five torpedo launcher here amidships. We've got an AA platform out back, which is probably where your second torpedo launcher would have gone. So we're expecting a decent AA defense. This says 55. We'll look into that in a little bit more detail here in a bit. Uh, but of course, we love Fletcher class destroyers in World Warships, and this one is likely to be no exception uh, when it does eventually come out. I don't believe they have announced the currency for Velos. If anybody knows, and you can drop a a comment in the description or in the in the chat below the comments below that'd be fantastic uh, we will talk about velos she looks nice but again we're seeing another one of these plain gray camouflages i feel like maybe wargaming is just giving us gray camouflages now because uh, they don't think we care about them but uh, i think people do still care about being stylish so hopefully we continue to have good camouflages be made available to us in the game uh, if we take a look at survivability Velos is going to show up with 17,100 hit points. You will be able to use your captain perk here as usual to get 350 hit points times 9, which is 27 times whatever, 9 times, eh, about 3,000 hit points. Uh, you'll get about 3, 000, a little over 3,000 hit points added, so that'll push you up over 20k there. Uh, artillery, we are looking at four 127 millimeter guns for the Velos. Uh, very typical expected U.S. destroyer, 127 mils on these. Uh, just a 5% fire chance, but a pretty good reload time of two and a half seconds. Uh, Fletcher, I think, has five guns and a three and a half second reload. So uh, we could do a little math there, I guess, to find out whether or not Fletcher or Velos has better gun DPM. In fact, I think we can do this pretty quickly. 25% more guns and 29% better reload. So I think that means that Velos is gonna come out with better DPM, all other things being equal, which they might be, and we'll find out as we go. 106 meters maximum dispersion, 12.1 kilometer range, 1800 maximum damage for the HE, and 2100 for the AP. Let's go take a look at Fletcher. Fletcher has 1800 maximum damage, 2100 maximum damage, uh, 119 meters maximum dispersion with a, now mine is of course all built out with a 15 kilometer range. I suspect you'll be able to push Velos to a similar figure from 12.1 base as well. Taking a look at the torpedoes, we mentioned it was a single five torpedo launcher, 10 and a half kilometers, 66 knots, pretty typical uh, torpedoes that we've got there. Uh, very similar what we've got here, 10 and a half knots, 69 knots, probably because I took Swiftfish or something, um, with a 95.4 uh, second reload, again, probably up, uh, upgraded with my captains and modules. Um, Looking at a 60 second reload here on Velos though. That's super fast, holy smokes. 60 seconds is gonna let you put those fish in the water pretty fast. So it's got half as many torpedo launchers and it's got 
not it's not twice as fast of torpedo loading. 40 se 45 seconds would be about twice as fast as what I have on my Fletcher. So you, you might be able to do some work here to bring it down a little bit, but uh, you're gonna be able to use that single launcher frequently is what we're noticing here. I think that is pretty great. AA defense rated at 55. Uh, the damage by the shell explosions, 1,540. And we get three shell explosions. So probably not quite as capable as what we were seeing with Holland or what we were seeing with the Larna for sure. Um, but, you know, probably able to swat a couple of airplanes. You know, like, like we say in World Warships, you're never going to be able to stop all the airplanes coming in. And like I like to remind people, you can't swat or shoot down incoming battleship shells either. Unfortunately, all you can do is just dodge. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to do a little bit of that wiggling. In fact, let's take a look at maneuverability next. 3.9 second rudder shift time, 620 meter uh, circle, turning circle, and a 38 knot speed. Take a look at what we've got with Fletcher, 36 knots, so a little slower, even though it's probably somewhat upgraded. 560, which I wanna say was a little bit better, and 2.4 meters, or uh, 2.4 second, which is a little bit better as well. So you might be able to improve your rudder shift time here if you wanted, but 3.9 is a pretty workable rudder shift time. I think you'll be able to waggle the back end of this thing um, and get some, get some, I don't know why I'm doing this, this is fun, and get some, uh, some turning done, which would be, uh, which would be helpful in avoiding those incoming shots. Concealment for the Velos, again, totally unmodified is 7.1. This is gonna let you get into the high fives, probably 5.8, 5.9 um, with your captain and upgrade modules installed. For Velos, we've got uh, a few items here in the consumables section, defensive AA fire, uh, you've got a speed boost, 8% speed boost, pretty standard fare there, two minutes uh, action, two minutes reload, and smoke here, 30 second action time, 127 second dispersion time, so it gets to keep that US smoke dispersion time, which tends to be a really nice feature of those American destroyers. Uh, damage control party here, pretty standard fare. Now here is the tier nine American cruiser Vallejo. We are gonna take a quick look at this guy. Now this is... I, it's a light cruiser, and we'll take a look at its artillery and things, but let's get a load of this thing. Nice squared off back end, which is pretty cool. A little 146 back here, which I think is kind of neat looking. Two barrels per turret. That's a total of five turrets. And uh, looks like no torpedoes, which is not uncommon for a U.S. cruiser. So we'll uh, we'll take a close look at that. Nice 146 up front here. Big AA mount on the, on the bow, on the nose there. Um, kind of a modern looking ship. I think it looks pretty slick. Big squared off AA baskets up here on the superstructure as well. Uh, survivability wise, we're looking at 44,000 hit points with just 4% torpedo reduction damage. I don't think a lot of cruisers have a high number here, but that seems like it almost wasn't worth mentioning. Um, although to be fair, I haven't really compared this against a lot of other ships there in that way. Artillery, five, uh, five turrets of two barrels of 152 millimeter light cruiser gun 16.7 kilometer range 180 degree turn time is 7.2 seconds 148 meters of maximum dispersion way out at 16.7 kilometers which really isn't that long of a range but it's workable especially at tier 9 for a u.s cruiser um, i think we can we can probably get some work done with that range uh, 2200 damage max for those 152s with a 12% fire chance so you should be able to get some fires going 30 millimeter he pen capacity some captains may all uh, um, may opt into going with an ifhe upgrade for their commander uh, and if you did it would drop your fire chance to six percent but you would be able to pen i think 37 millimeters which would get you well above the 32 millimeter threshold of a lot of armors and in above some 36 uh, millimeter armor as well uh, when it comes to the shells that come with the Vallejo, there are two different velocities. HE shells traveling at 812 meters per second and the AP shells traveling at 762 meters per second. So you're going to need to know how to shoot with both of these different shells at different distances. Couple that with the spotter plane, which we're going to talk about in a little bit later, and there's a lot of variables to how these shells are going to work. I think players who really know when to use AP and when to use AG with this ship are going to benefit. And when you think about the AP in particular, that slower initial velocity is going to result in higher arcing shells with plunging fire. So if you understand the thicknesses of the decks that you can and cannot pen with the Vallejo, uh, you should be able to take advantage of when to use the AP 
and when not to. Vallejo is going to face ships from tier 7 all the way up to tier 11, up to the super ships. And so you're going to face a lot of different armor thicknesses. So getting your head wrapped around at least some rough classifications of the ships that you're facing is going to make it uh, more beneficial. If you don't do that, you'll probably just rely on HE and try to get fires. You can get fires even if you shatter your shells, uh, but uh, if you can take advantage of AP, you're gonna get more damage. It's a thousand extra max damage per shell. And in my daring video where we tested IFHE and AP, uh, we learned that as long as you're getting pens, you're gonna get about that much more percentage of damage. And we're likely to see that with Vallejo for captains who really know how to use her as well. AA defense is relatively high. Um, we're getting some dual purpose nature here. These 152s are gonna be able to fire up some flak puffs for you. 152 millimeter guns there, 76s and 20s as well for a total rating of 86. 1800 damage per uh, puff there for the flak explosions is pretty good. And we're gonna get six puffs. So that's pretty dang good. Hit probability of 90%. You know, some there's a lot of math in here that isn't under the player's control, which is sometimes a little bit frustrating for players who'd like to really grab a hold of their destiny there. but. Um, rest assured, Vallejo is going to be able to knock down a few planes. Again, as we've said before, you're not ever going to be able to knock down all the planes. It's just not how AA works in World of Warships. Kind of a bummer, but it doesn't mean it's not true. Speed is around 32 and a half knots, 740 meter turning circle with a 10.7 second uh, rudder shift time. Those are pretty typical numbers for a cruiser uh, of this tier. So uh, I think we're within spec there. We take a look at the concealment, 11.5. Again, pre-captain, pre-upgrades and things like that. So we'd be able to bring that way down uh, to, uh, gosh, she'd probably be able to get that down under 10, which would be pretty great. I think she's gonna be fairly sneaky. If we go in and take a look at the equipment for Vallejo, she comes with a rapid takeoff spotter. That's gonna increase your firing range by 20%. Well, 20% on top of 16.7 is gonna be plus about 3 point, I don't know, 3.3, 3.5 uh, more kilometers. So you'll be up around the 20 kilometer mark, which is gonna be kind of tricky with those slower AP shells, but you should be able to put some HEs out there with relative accuracy. Uh, you do have a hull repair on this ship a turbo AA or defensive AA module, and of course DCP. This is a US cruiser that comes with no radar and no acoustics, no sensors of any kind, in fact. And so that is one thing that's gonna turn some people off of this ship, I predict. However, um, the HE spamming nature of it should be somewhat attractive to other players. Not quite sure exactly if this is like a whole new trend that Wargaming is going for with Vallejo, if they're gonna try to set up this concept of long range light uh, HE, light, light cruisers spamming HE and things at range. Uh, that rapid takeoff spotter is cool though. You guys might know that this exists on the Lazo. And on the Lazo, I find it very enjoyable to launch this thing and, and burn down battleships at range. Lazo does not do well up close and because it's a light cruiser, it's lightly armored. And I think that's probably likely gonna be the case uh, for Vallejo as well. In fact, let's take a look at her armor layout. We didn't do this for everybody, but uh, 25 mils up front, 25 mils there, 102. And if we start peeling away some of the, uh, I'll leave the Citadel in there. Citadel's a little bit above the water and not gonna be particularly hard to punch into. So yeah, I think you're gonna wanna use range to uh, avoid that battleship damage. Range and islands uh, are gonna be your friend there. Finally, the one you German battleship fans have been waiting for. This is Anhalt. Anhalt has an absurd five turrets with three guns apiece. Uh, the way, of course, that it pays for these turrets is by having the turrets be smaller. They're 350 millimeter guns. That's the same size guns that you find on like the tier six um, Prinz Eitel Friedrich. Uh, and so like these are not going to be big mega overmatching guns, but you get a lot of them and they do uh, they do 4,000 average or excuse me 4,000 maximum damage with the HE shells 27% fire chance 88 millimeter armor penetration So you will be able to slap a lot of people with HE should you choose to go that route or 9,500 damage uh, with the AP shells max both both types of shells uh, travel at 815 meters per second once they leave the barrel and of course we'll have to wait and see how the shell drag comes out on those guys rotation time is a battleship-esque 45 seconds with a 30 second reload for these 350s 
interesting battleship for sure. Just ba just reading the specs, this is an interesting battleship. One thing you might note as we kind of zoom in, we've got a lot of AA guns and main battery guns, but there's a lot of ship here that doesn't seem to have a lot of secondaries on it. There's our first secondary. There's another one, there's another one. We've got some casemate secondaries down below. Looks like four casemates on this side with uh, three two barrel turrets right there. As we continue on up and wrap around, we're gonna see, I think, the same thing over here. Two casemates up front, two casemates out back there, and then one, two, three secondary turrets right there. And that's about it in terms of secondaries. Let's take a look at what we've got uh, listed in here. So six 105 millimeters and eight 150 millimeters. That means these uh, casemates are your 150s. These are your 105s up top. Uh, reload times 8.6 seconds for those 150s, 3.4 seconds for the 105s. And the 105s are going to be able to rotate and uh, put shots on target a lot easier, being as they're turreted rather than being casemate secondaries. So um, I'm not, I don't know, what's the range on these? 7.6 kilometers. I mean, you'll be able to build that range up um, pretty good. You'll probably get it up over 10 or 11 kilometers. Um, over 11 probably would be my guess. I'd have to like do a build here, which I'm not prepared to do. Main battery firing range is 21.1 kilometers, uh, which is going to be far enough for you to get some work done. I think this boat's going to do great against things like cruisers. And even honestly, if you're running HE, this thing would absolutely decimate a destroyer. Um, I don't know how it's gonna do up tiered with those 350s. In fact, I suspect it won't do that great against tier 10, tier 11 battleships as it goes up against those matchups. When we look here at the consumables, we've got a spotting aircraft or a fighter. Spotter is pretty standard fare, 20% range, 100 second action time, 240 second reload. Hull repair is 340 hit points per second for 28 seconds, reloading in 80, fairly standard there as well with a DCP. That superstructure for a German battleship is quite small. Um, there's just not a lot to hit there that is of low armor. This 19 millimeter plating out back and 19 millimeter plating up here. That said, you do have 32 mil plating up here on the front end. And I'm guessing that's 32 millimeter plating out back as well. Um, the deck is 50 millimeters. So plunging fire is gonna have to contend with 50 millimeters worth of uh, worth of armor with 250 millimeters here on the armor belt. If we turn off things like the nose, we can see kind of what's going on in here in terms of armor. We've got a little bit of a overhang there for our turtle back, which is doing good. We got some, uh, some gap in here between this plating, 32 mils. And if we pull that away, boop, we can see that underneath that we've got 50 millimeter armor. So that turtle back is going to help reach down under the surface of the water to make it difficult to reach this softer, squishier armor down below. Uh, 350 mil armor on the side here is tough, but not untenable. Remember, this is going to face ships with 457s, with 460s, with 510s, with 508s. You know, you're going to get blabbed just like you would expect to in a tier eight, uh, tier eight battleship. But uh, I think against like tier things and uh, ships with 406s and smaller, now you should be able to successfully angle away from some of that damage. Um, if somebody can overcome this, uh, this casemate here, uh, you are going to get Citadel. It's possible to happen there just based on what I'm seeing here. Um, but, you know, we'll have to see how it actually performs in practice. Like I said, I haven't tried this ship yet. Um, just landed in my port today and I wanted to take a quick look at it. Uh, so your guess is as good as mine on the armor. Pretty excited about on halt. I think there's a lot of German uh, German battleship enjoyers who are pretty excited about this ship showing up in game. Um, it's got a cool camo. It's not real fancy, but I like darker colored camos. I think this this black ship hull with the gray side turrets with the dark gray tops is pretty cool. For some reason, this looks really Star Wars to me, um, and I kind of dig that about it. I haven't done this on the other ships, but let's take a look. Does it have an alternate? Oh, it does. It inverts the color scheme. Look at that. Gray with black tops. That looks pretty cool, too. Um, I'm not sure which one I'd run. Probably the original, but, uh, you know, let me know. Let me know what you think is cooler looking for on haul. Well, that is the end of our discussion of all of these crazy new ships. What do you guys think? Which one are you most excited about? Which one are you saving your resources for? And which one are you happy to never, ever, ever have 
in your port. I want you to let me know down in the comments below. Also, what did you think of this format? Is this interesting, entertaining? Is this valuable to you? You know, I kind of just shot this off the cuff because I had a very limited time with these ships today uh, and I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys some uh, a chance to, to see what I could see um, about them. So if you're interested in this kind of content, let me know down below as well. Obviously the NDA is still in, at, in effect for these ships, so I can't speak about my impressions about them. I can't tell you uh, about how I feel about them or how they performed for me. Um, so as the NDA gets lifted, which one of these ships do you want to make sure that I cover? I won't be able to do everything, but I want to know what your opinions are down below. With that all said, I thank you guys again for watching the video. I hope you had a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next battle. Until then, take care of each other, be cool and be nice. See ya.